Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So recently, Eddie reached out to me about his friend Brian, who sadly had just had his card stolen from his car. Eddie mentioned that putting together a deck and making a deck tech for Brian might be something that he would enjoy and that it could help Brian get back on his magic feet. So here we are, and Brian, I hope that you enjoy this deck tech. Now, Eddie said that Brian tends to play graveyard and artifact focused decks, so I decided to build a deck around a commander that can most definitely utilize the graveyard and artifacts in an incredibly powerful way, even on a budget. So every single card in this deck is less than $1, and yes, that includes the commander. And that commander, of course, is Kalfanor the Last U. Kalfanor is a 3-7 Treefolk Shaman with Vigilance and Reach that costs 3 white, black, green. He has, whenever Kalfanor the last you or another creature you control dies, return up to one other target creature card with lesser toughness from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a value-centric commander that can replace creatures in play that die with ones from our graveyard and get them back into our hand. And with the right build, there are some incredibly overpowered and broken things that we can easily do with this commander. So what exactly would those things be? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So the first of the key pieces to break the game open with this deck are creatures that cost nothing to cast. For example, we've got Shifting Wall, Ugin's Conjurant, and Cryptic Trilobite. Each of them cost X or XX, and we can cast them for zero. Now again, this type of creature is only one of the key pieces that we need, and we'll talk about the other ones here in a bit. Essentially, the goal of this deck is to get a creature in play, sacrifice to get a creature out of our graveyard, then cast that, then sacrifice it to get the other creature back, etc, etc. Obviously, though, with these as they are, if we cast them for a zero, well, they just come into play and immediately die, and they're not going to be able to get anything else back since their toughness is going to be zero. But like I said, we've got some other key pieces to talk about here in a bit that can help with that. Next up, we've got yet another artifact creature that costs zero with Ornithopter, and it's a zero too. So keep in mind that if we want to get this one back, we need a creature that dies that has three toughness or more. Next up, we actually have some one mana creatures that basically pay for themselves and are essentially free with Mirror Moon Vessel, Shambling Ghast, and Blood Pet. When Mirror Moon Vessel dies, we get a colorless. When Shambling Ghast dies, we get a treasure, and we can sacrifice Blood Pet for a black. Again, although each of these do cost us one mana, when they die, we get that mana back. So if we can keep getting them back from our graveyard over and over again, we can keep recasting them essentially for free. And next up, we actually have an artifact that can give us even more options for these quote-unquote free creatures with Tangle Root. Its Oracle text reads, whenever a player casts a creature spell, that player adds green. So actually, if we're already set up with all these other creatures and we're casting them infinitely, we actually have infinite green mana, and we can do a lot of things with that. But as I mentioned before, this also gives us more options for creatures that can technically go infinite. For example, we've got some one-mana green creatures like Elvish Pioneer, Arboreal Grazer, and Crows and Wayfarer. Elvish Pioneer and Arboreal Grazer have when they enter the battlefield, we can put a land from our hand into play tapped. And then by sacrificing Crows and Wayfarer, we can put a land card from our hand into play. So these can be some fantastic early ramp creatures for us, and again on top of that with Tangle Root, we can go infinite with them once we're set up properly. And then next up, one more one mana green creature that can help us ramp is Diligent Farmhand. By paying one in a green, we can sacrifice it to go get a basic land into play tapped. Outside of these one mana creatures though, we also have some other ways to ramp in this deck with things like Search for Tomorrow, Rampant Growth, Edge of Autumn, and even some more creatures that are just slightly more expensive with Dawn Trader Elk and Farhaven Elf. And again, creatures like these can get us value when they die by getting us a creature back that has lesser toughness. And actually, playing with our creature's toughness is the next key piece that we're going to talk about.
So let's move on now and talk about some enchantments that can help us out with Lumithred, Field, Parapet, and Fortifying Provisions. Each of these very simply give creatures that we control plus zero plus one. Okay, I, I guess Lumith Red Field can also be cast as a morph creature, Parapet can be cast at instant speed if we're willing to sacrifice it, and Fortifying Provisions also makes us a food token, but the main thing here is, is that they're an anthem for toughness. Increasing our creature's toughness is crucial to breaking the game with this deck. Again, when one of our creatures dies, we get a creature back from our graveyard that has lesser toughness. So by increasing the toughness of our creatures in play, we increase the options of what we can get back when they die and this is most definitely necessary to go infinite. And we'll talk about the final piece here in a bit on how actually we get to go infinite in this deck. But next up, let's talk about some even bigger toughness anthems with Builder's Blessing and Castle. Each of these give untapped creatures we control plus zero plus two. Again, the more toughness we give our creatures, the more options we have of things to get back. And of course, some standard anthems that pump our creatures' power as well can still help out because, yes, they also pump toughness with Glorious Anthem, Gaius Anthem, and Always Watching. And we even have some bigger anthems with Dictative Heliod, which has Flash and gives creatures we control plus two plus two, and Collect a Blessing, which gives creatures we control plus three plus three. Again, the more toughness for our creatures, the better. Because once we're set up with two quote-unquote free-to-cast creatures and we have enough toughness anthems in play, we are good to go with our last piece. Or I guess I should say the last place to create an infinite loop. And that last piece is going to be a free sacrifice outlet with things like Viscera Seer, Carrion Feeder, and Blood Throne Vampire. Viscera Seer is a fantastic free sacrifice outlet that says sacrifice a creature, scry one. So say again that we've got two of those first creatures that we talked about with Shifting Wall and Ugin's Conjurant. Both are 0-0 zero, zero creatures that cost X. If we even just have one Toughness Anthem in play, when they're in play, they're going to be a 0-1. So we sacrifice the one in play to get the other one back from our graveyard, then we cast the other one for free, and then we sacrifice that one to get the other one back, and so on and so forth. Again, with the Seer, we are scrying one as many times as we want to get to the exact card that we need. Again, this is essentially an infinite loop of sacrificing, casting, and creatures entering the battlefield. And of course, we've got other free sacrifice outlets like Carrion Feeder and Blood Throne Vampire that have other effects. Carrion Feeder has Sacrifice a Creature, put a plus plus one counter on it, and Blood Throne Vampire has Sacrifice a Creature, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So obviously, if we can get through with either of these in combat, they're going to be infinitely large, and that opponent that they hit is very, very dead. Regardless, we've got more free sacrifice outlets on creatures that are very hard to deal with. Cartellarist Grant has sacrificed another creature. She gains protection for the color of your choice until end of turn. And then both Brawls and Demir Houseguard can sacrifice a creature to regenerate them. And Demir Houseguard actually has Transmute for one black black, so we can discard it to go get any other card in our deck that has a converted mana cost of four. So this is an incredibly flexible card that can really help us out in a ton of situations. And then we even have a free sacrifice out that can easily take out one player, at least most of the time, with Flesh Eater Imp. It's a 2-2 flyer with in fact that says sacrifice a creature, Flesh Eater Imp gets plus plus one until end of turn. Flying is a fantastic form of evasion, and generally it's going to be able to get through on at least one opponent, and they're going to be very, very dead. And actually, with this, we don't even have to go infinite a lot of the time to take out an opponent, because we can easily sacrifice eight creatures in one turn just by being set up in a proper way. And of course, this isn't the only way that we can take out our opponents and gain a lot of value by sacrificing our creatures. So let's talk about some ways to gain a lot of value and dig through our deck with things like Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper, and Moldervine Reclamation. Grim Horror Specs says whenever another non-token creature you control dies, draw a card. Midnight Reaper does the exact same thing, but it also deals one damage to us. And then Moldervine Reclamation does the exact opposite of that, essentially, it gains us one life and draws us a card. Regardless, these are fantastic draw engines in this deck because, again, even when we're not going infinite, we can draw through our deck very quickly by sacrificing creatures. And when we are going infinite, well, we can go get whatever card we need. And another card that can also be incredibly impactful in this deck is Fecundity. It says whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. So, though this might help our opponents out as well, I can pretty much guarantee you it's going to help us the most. We've also got some big creatures that can help us out too with card advantage with things like Harvester of Souls, Soul the Harvest, and Primordial Sage. Harvester of Souls says whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card, and keep in mind this counts our opponent's creatures as well. And then Soul the Harvest is kind of on the other end of that. It says whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. And Primordial Sage is somewhat similar to this. It says whenever you cast a creature spell, you may draw a card. So, of course, these can provide us with a lot of card advantage throughout the game, and again, if we've got that infinite loop going on, we can draw pretty much our entire deck. Next up, some more cards that can help us dig through our deck are cards like Hazaret's Monument, Gate to the Afterlife, and Shadows of the Past. Hazaret's Monument says whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. 
And then Gate to the Afterlife says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you gain one life, then you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Shadows of the Past helps out in a different way. It says, whenever a creature dies, scry one. So while each of these technically don't provide us card advantage, they do provide us incredible card selection. They can help us dig through our deck and get to the exact card that we need for the situation that we're in. Speaking of which, we're also going to be running some tutors that can help us out with Diabolic Tutor, Razkest Right, and Behold the Beyond. Diabolic Tutor and Razkest Right are just straight up tutors that can go get us one card directly into our hand. And then Behold the Beyond makes us discard our hand, but then we get three cards from our library and get them right into our hand. So although we do have to discard our hand, that's usually not going to be a very big deal. And yeah, three cards is probably going to help us win the game. Next up, Instrument of the Bards can really help us out too. It's a legendary artifact that has at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a harmony counter on Instrument of the Bards. By paying three and a green and tapping it, we search our library for a creature card with mana value equal to the number of harmony counters on it, and then we put it into our hand. So actually for this deck's purposes, we probably don't even have to put any harmony counters on it. Again, if we're trying to go get one of those zero mana creatures, well, we can do that. Now, as effective as all these cards are, there's one in my opinion that stands above the rest, and that's gonna be the golden pig of this deck. The Golden Pig is of course the number one card out of our 99, and the Golden Pig for this deck is Ecological Appreciation. It's a sorcery for X2 in a green that says, search your library and graveyard for up to four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of those cards, shuffle the chosen cards into your library and put the rest on the battlefield, exile Ecological Appreciation. This is a fantastic tutor that can help us get the right pieces that we need for the exact situation that we're in. Again, just think about casting this for only three mana, not putting any mana into that X. We've got plenty of creatures at zero mana in this deck, so we're basically going to be guaranteed to at least get two of them because, yeah, your opponent has to pick two of them. Or again, if we need a quote-unquote free creature and a sacrifice outlet, we just have to pay one mana into that X to go get, you know, Viserysir or Carrion Feeder, and yeah, some free creatures too. This is a very flexible card that can help us out in a lot of situations and pretty much get us whatever we need for the exact situation that we're in, and this can really set us up to win. So because of all of that, that's why this is the Golden Pig. Now, after we've gotten the exact pieces that we need and we've got our infinite loop going, how do we actually win? Well, we of course can drain our opponents out with things like Corpse Knight, Zulaport Cutthroat, and Falconrath Noble. Corpse Knight says whenever the creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Zulaport Cutthroat says whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. And then Falconrath Noble says whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Regardless, if our creatures are entering or leaving, if we're doing it infinitely, we're draining out our opponents with any of these. So we're also going to be running Sir Conrad the Grim, Pious Evangel, and Disciple of the Vault. Sir Conrad the Grim punishes our opponents for creatures going, well, pretty much anywhere, and here we go. It says, whenever the creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And then Pious Evangel says, whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Now, obviously, just as this is, this would just gain us infinite life, but by paying two and tapping it to sacrifice another permanent, we transform it. And Pice of Angel turns into Wayward Disciple. Wayward Disciple says whenever it or another creature we control dies, target opponent loses one life and we gain one life. Next up, there's Disciple of Vault, which says whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. Again, a good amount of those free creatures are artifacts or make an artifact, and yeah, we're going to be doing that infinitely, so we can drain opponents out with those too. And the final way to finish opponents off is with Tendrils of Agony. It's a sorcery for two black black, and it says target player loses two life, and you gain two life, and it's got Storm. So we essentially cast an infinite number of spells, then we cast this, and we get an infinite number of copies of this, and our opponents are very, 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 very dead. Now, before actually taking our opponents out, if we need some ways to take out some of their things, let's talk about some cards that can help with that quickly. Knight of Autumn, Reclamation Sage, and Acidic Slime have some fantastic ETBs. Knight of Autumn has, when it enters the battlefield, choose one, put two counters on it, destroy target artifact or enchantment, or you gain four life. And then Rex Age's ETB is to destroy target artifact or enchantment, and a six slime does the exact same thing, or can destroy a land. Next up, we've got Foundation Breaker, which is going to destroy target artifact or enchantment when it comes into play, and it's got an evoke cost of one in a green. Finally, there's Brutalizer Axark, which has, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Search your library for a creature card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put the card on top of it, or put target non-creature permanent on the bottom of its owner's library. So again, this can go get us one of our key pieces, or it can get rid of one of our opponent's things. Next up, we've got some flexible wraths that can help us clear the board with Dust to Dawn and Akroma's Vengeance. Dust will destroy all creatures with power 3 or greater, and Dawn says return all creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand. 
and then Akroma's Vengeance is going to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, or we can cycle it for three. But now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's talk about the price. As I mentioned at the start of this episode, this deck is utilizing a lot of effective budget cards, each of them being less than $1. So, as you can see on the left, the estimated cost of this deck is just $33.37. Keep in mind that that cost does include basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those, well, you've got some savings there. And speaking of savings, this cost also doesn't include heavily played or damaged cards on TCG Player, so you can save some more money there too. Though, do keep in mind that this cost does not include the cost of shipping, so that might vary depending on where you live. Regardless again, Brian, I hope that you enjoy this episode and this deck. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.